Hello, Hello. today's video today's we have video, the following have content. The following content. In 1973, the six mysterious people who carried Bruce Lee's coffin, all from foreign countries, all of them prominent. Everyone knows that Bruce Lee is a kung fu superstar, but few people know that when he passed away in 1973, six mysterious people from foreign countries carried his coffin. Although these six people came from different countries, they all had a deep connection with this kung fu master. Among them were movie stars, martial arts masters, and even more prominent secret figures. In that special era, why would there be such a group of foreigners who came from afar to see off a Chinese kung fu master? What unknown stories do they have with Bruce Lee? Let us walk into the time tunnel and uncover this little known history. 1. The Last Moment of the Kung Fu Master On July 20, 1973, a sultry summer afternoon in Hong Kong cast an indelible shadow on the entire martial arts and film industries. On this day, Kung Fu superstar Bruce Lee suddenly fainted in Ding Pei's apartment in Kowloon Tong and died after being sent to the hospital. He was 32 years old. After this shocking news came out, the whole of Hong Kong fell into great grief. At that time, Bruce Lee was at the peak of his career. His latest movie Enter the Dragon had just been released in Hong Kong and set an amazing box office record. At the same time, he was also preparing for the filming of his new work Game of Death. Bruce Lee's death came so suddenly that various speculations emerged. Some said it was a drug allergy, some said it was heat stroke, and some even put forward other speculations. The Hong Kong government conducted a detailed investigation on this, and the official autopsy report finally showed that the cause of death was an allergy to the painkiller Mabus, which led to brain edema. After the news of Bruce Lee's death came out, media around the world reported on the matter extensively. Time magazine and Life magazine in the United States, Yomiari Shimbun in Japan, and many mainstream media in Europe responded to the news at the first time. Martial arts figures and film celebrities from various countries also sent condolences to express their grief. Bruce Lee's funeral was scheduled for July 25 at the World Funeral Home in Kowloon, Hong Kong. On the day of the funeral, tens of thousands of people spontaneously came to the funeral home to bid farewell to the Kung Fu superstar. The order on the scene was out of control for a time, and the Hong Kong police had to dispatch a large number of police forces to maintain order. However, the most striking thing was that at the coffin carrying ceremony, six people from different countries served as pallbearers. The appearance of these six pallbearers attracted great attention at the time. According to Chinese traditional customs, pallbearers are usually served by relatives, friends or fellow townsmen. At Bruce Lee's funeral, these six pallbearers were all from overseas, and each of them had an extraordinary status. This unconventional arrangement not only reflects Bruce Lee's lofty status in the international martial arts community, but also shows his unique influence as a martial artist who breaks cultural barriers. At the funeral that day, in addition to these six special pallbearers, there were also martial arts figures, film celebrities and celebrities from all over the world. Their arrival made the funeral an international memorial service, fully demonstrating Bruce Lee's extraordinary charm as a world-class martial artist and movie star. Two. The identities of the six mysterious pallbearers. At Bruce Lee's funeral, the appearance of six pallbearers from different countries attracted widespread attention from all walks of life. These six pallbearers not only came from different countries, but also represented different identities and statuses, and their origins with Bruce Lee were also different. Steve McQueen, as a top Hollywood star, was the most watched of the six pallbearers. In the 1970s, McQueen was at the peak of his career and starred in classic films such as The Great Escape and Butch Cassidy and The Sundance Kid. His acquaintance with Bruce Lee began in 1967, when McQueen was looking for a martial arts instructor to improve his fighting skills. On the recommendation of a friend, he met Bruce Lee and then began to learn Jeet Kune Do from Bruce Lee. Kimura Takeyuki is a martial artist from Japan, and his origin with Bruce Lee can be traced back to an earlier time. In 1964, when Bruce Lee opened a martial arts school in Seattle at the age of 19, Kimura Takayuki came to visit. Although Kimura Takayuki was several years older than Bruce Lee, he was extremely humble and asked the young martial artist for advice. This unconventional move caused quite a stir in the martial arts world at the time. Danny Inasanto was one of Bruce Lee's most proud students. This Filipino-American not only mastered the exquisite skills of Jeet Kune Do under Bruce Lee's guidance, but also later became an important inheritor of Jeet Kune Do. Inosanto played an important role as a consultant in Bruce Lee's creation of the Jeet Kune Do system. Peter Chin's identity has always been quite mysterious. Although this Malaysian-Chinese businessman rarely appears in public, 
he has a very deep friendship with Bruce Lee. It is said that he's not only Bruce Lee's disciple, but also provided financial support when Bruce Lee founded his martial arts school. James Coburn's experience is quite dramatic. The former Hollywood actor met Bruce Lee during the low point of his career and regained his confidence in the process of learning martial arts. He not only mastered superb martial arts skills, but also replanned the direction of his acting career under the influence of Bruce Lee. The last Paul Bearer was Lee Jung Q from South Korea. This martial artist not only has the same surname as Bruce Lee, but also has many resonances with Bruce Lee in martial arts concepts. While studying with Bruce Lee, he studied in depth the combination of Jeet Kune Do and traditional Korean martial arts. The appearance of these six pallbearers broke the routine of traditional funeral ceremonies. Their existence not only reflects Bruce Lee's profound influence on the martial arts world, but also shows the extensive network of Kung Fu masters beyond national boundaries and races. In Hong Kong at that time, such a funeral that combined Eastern and Western elements was itself a highly symbolic cultural phenomenon. After the funeral, the six pallbearers each returned to their own fields, but they all continued to inherit Bruce Lee's martial arts spirit and concepts to varying degrees. Their experience has become an important page in Bruce Lee's legendary life, and has also written a unique footnote for the international dissemination of Kung Fu culture. 3. The Deep Story of the Friendship Between Master and Apprentice Bruce Lee always maintained extremely strict standards for accepting apprentices. In the early days of his founding of Jeet Kune Do, countless martial arts enthusiasts came to him, but only a few were able to receive his personal guidance. Behind this strict selection standard, Bruce Lee's unique concept of martial arts inheritance is reflected. In 1964, Bruce Lee opened his first martial arts school in Seattle. Unlike traditional martial arts schools, he broke the racial barriers that were common in the martial arts world and pioneered the teaching of Chinese Kung Fu to non-Chinese. This move caused great controversy in the Chinese martial arts world in the United States at the time, and some traditional martial artists even strongly protested against it. But Bruce Lee insisted that martial arts should not be limited by race and national boundaries. When choosing disciples, he paid more attention to the other party's martial arts cultivation and learning attitude rather than their background. This innovative thinking gradually brought together martial arts enthusiasts from all over the world in his martial arts school. Bruce Lee also had a unique teaching method. He required every disciple to undergo rigorous basic training, including physical fitness, flexibility and basic skills training. Even Hollywood stars like Steve McQueen had to start with the most basic training. According to Danny Inasano, Bruce Lee often emphasized in training, martial arts is not a performance, but a practical skill. For those talented disciples, Bruce Lee would devote more personal time to coaching. Kimura Takayuki once mentioned in an interview that Bruce Lee often coached him alone in the early morning to practice, sometimes for several hours. This strict training method laid a solid foundation for the future development of martial arts for these disciples. Bruce Lee's teaching method combines the essence of the East and the West. He not only teaches the essence of traditional Chinese martial arts, but also incorporates Western training concepts and scientific methods. Under his guidance, disciples not only have to learn martial arts movements, but also have a deep understanding of the principles of human body mechanics and combat strategies. It is particularly worth mentioning that Bruce Lee adopted a teaching method that is tailored to each disciple. For James Coburn, who was physically strong, he focused on cultivating his explosive power and practical ability, while for Lee Jun Ju, who was relatively thin, he paid more attention to the use of skills in speed training. This personalized teaching method enables each disciple to give full play to his own advantages. In terms of the innovation of martial arts concepts, Bruce Lee proposed the concept of Jeet Kune Do, emphasizing the absorption of the strengths of various schools in the elimination of the draws. He encouraged his disciples to break the boundaries of martial arts schools and find the most suitable martial arts style for themselves in practice. This open and inclusive attitude enables his disciples to continue to innovate while inheriting traditions. Ken Peter once mentioned in his recollections that Bruce Lee was not only a martial arts instructor, but also a wise man. In addition to training, he often discussed with his disciples the differences between Eastern and Western cultures in the development direction of martial arts in modern society. This exchange of ideas made the relationship between master and apprentice far beyond the simple teaching of skills. On the basis of this deep friendship between master and apprentice, these disciples from different countries gradually formed a close martial arts family. They not only learned from each other in martial arts, but also played an important role in cultural exchanges.
This cross-border martial arts inheritance laid an important foundation for the globalization of Kung Fu culture later. 4. Cross-border martial arts inheritance. Although Bruce Lee's death caused a great loss to the martial arts world, his six proud disciples continued to inherit and develop the martial arts spirit of the master in different regions. This inheritance is not only reflected in martial arts skills, but also in the deepening and innovation of the concept of Jeet Kune Do. Steve McQueen continued to promote Jeet Kune Do in Hollywood. Through his influence, many Hollywood actors began to pay attention to martial arts training and introduced it into film production. In 1974, McQueen founded the Bruce Lee Martial Arts Research Society in Los Angeles, specializing in the research and dissemination of Jeet Kune Do skills. This research society attracted a large number of martial arts enthusiasts in the United States, laying the foundation for the spread of Jeet Kune Do in North America. After returning to Japan, Takeyuki Kimura combined Jeet Kune Do with traditional Japanese martial arts and created a unique training system. The dojo he opened in Tokyo not only taught Bruce Lee's martial arts concepts, but also incorporated elements of karate. This fusion of Eastern and Western martial arts has attracted widespread attention in the Japanese martial arts community and provided new ideas for the modernization of Japanese martial arts. Danny Inosanto became one of the most important inheritors of Jeet Kune Do. He established many martial arts halls on the west coast of the United States to systematically organize and teach Bruce Lee's martial arts system. In particular, in 1975, the Jeet Kune Do training manual he compiled became an important reference for many martial arts enthusiasts. This manual records Bruce Lee's training methods and technical essentials in detail, and has made an important contribution to the standardized dissemination of Jeet Kune Do. Peter Kin promoted Jeet Kune Do in Southeast Asia. He used his business network to establish several training centers in Malaysia, Singapore and other places. These centers not only teach martial arts, but also regularly hold martial arts exchange activities, promoting the development of martial arts culture in Southeast Asia. In 1976, he held the first Bruce Lee Martial Arts Memorial Conference in Kuala Lumpur, which attracted martial artists from more than a dozen countries. James Coburn continued to carry forward Bruce Lee's spirit in the film industry. Many action films he starred in incorporated elements of Jeet Kune Do, and demonstrated the practicality and viewing value of this martial art in the film. At the same time, he also established a special martial arts guidance team in Hollywood to provide technical support for many action films. Lee Jung Koo created a new martial arts school in South Korea. He combined Jeet Kune Do with Taekwondo to develop a unique mixed martial arts system. This innovation has not only won the recognition of the Korean martial arts community, but also attracted the attention of many international martial arts organizations. In 1977, he systematically demonstrated this new martial arts system for the first time at the International Martial Arts Exchange Conference held in Seoul. Although these six disciples have developed different inheritance directions, they all adhere to the core concept of Bruce Lee's philosophy of water stay flexible and adapt to changes. They not only teach technology, but also pay more attention to the cultivation of martial arts ethics and the dissemination of culture. With their efforts, Jeet Kune Do has gradually developed into a global martial arts system. In 1978, the six disciples held their first gathering in Hong Kong to discuss the development direction of Jeet Kune Do. The meeting decided to establish the International Jeet Kune Do Federation to establish unified technical standards and hierarchical systems. This decision has opened up a new path for the standardized development of Jeet Kune Do and provided important experience for the subsequent international dissemination of martial arts. In the following years, these disciples continued to inherit and develop Bruce Lee's martial arts spirit in different ways. Their efforts have made Jeet Kune Do not only a martial arts system, but also a cultural phenomenon that transcends national boundaries. This way of inheritance shows the strong vitality of martial arts culture in modern society. 5. The deep meaning behind the funeral ceremony. The arrangement of six pallbearers at Bruce Lee's funeral reflects the deep integration of Eastern and Western cultures. This funeral is not only a farewell ceremony, but also symbolizes an important turning point in the process of globalization of martial arts culture. The funeral adopts a combination of Chinese and Western forms. On the basis of traditional Chinese funeral rituals, elements of Western funerals are added. The arrangement of pallbearers breaks the rule that close relatives with the same surname must serve as pallbearers in traditional Chinese funerals. These six martial artists from different countries jointly carried the pallbearer, showing a martial arts spirit that transcends national and racial boundaries. The ceremony integrates multiple cultural elements. 
The funeral was held in Hong Kong, but there was not only a Taoist salvation ceremony, but also a prayer session of the Western Church. This arrangement reflects the inclusive spirit that Bruce Lee advocated during his lifetime. The positions of the six pallbearers in the pallbearer team were also carefully arranged. Steve McQueen and Takeyuki Kimura in the front row represent the Western film industry and the Eastern martial arts industry respectively, symbolizing the integration of the two cultures. The weapons and training equipment used by Bruce Lee during his lifetime were displayed at the funeral. The placement of these instruments followed the rules of traditional martial arts schools, but also incorporated modern elements. For example, the traditional wooden man pile and modern training equipment were placed side by side, symbolizing the balance between tradition and modernity in martial arts. The ceremony also included a special segment, the six pallbearers each demonstrated a set of martial arts moves taught by Bruce Lee. This innovative arrangement caused a huge response in Hong Kong at the time. Each person demonstrated a training method specially designed by Bruce Lee for their characteristics, showing the characteristics of Jeet Kune Do's teaching in accordance with their aptitude. The music used during the funeral was also very distinctive. In addition to the traditional Buddhist chanting, Western classical music that Bruce Lee loved during his lifetime was also added. This interweaving of music created a unique cultural atmosphere, symbolizing the fusion of Eastern and Western art. At the memorial service after the funeral, the six pallbearers took turns to deliver eulogies. Each person spoke in his own native language, which was then relayed by a translator. This multilingual memorial method reflects Bruce Lee's respect for multiculturalism. Their speech has not only included personal memories, but also involved the future direction of martial arts development. It is worth noting that the entire funeral process was recorded in detail. These precious images later became important historical materials for studying the internationalization of Chinese martial arts. The photographer not only recorded the ceremony, but also paid special attention to the details of the integration of Chinese and Western etiquette. Every detail of the funeral ceremony was carefully arranged to maintain. The funeral ceremony not only showed the solemnity of tradition but also the breadth of innovation. For example, the offerings in front of the spirit tablet included both traditional tributes and Western food that Bruce Lee loved during his lifetime. This arrangement reflects his unique understanding of tradition and modernity. At the end of the ceremony, the six pallbearers completed the last ceremony together, they performed a set of joint training routines created by Bruce Lee. This set of movements combines the essence of Eastern and Western martial arts and is considered to be the best interpretation of Bruce Lee's martial arts ideas. The influence of this funeral went far beyond the scope of the time. It provided an important reference for the subsequent exchange of martial arts culture. Many martial artists began to think about how to achieve innovation while maintaining tradition and how to find a balance in cultural collisions. These thoughts promoted the spread and development of martial arts culture around the world. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave your opinion in the comments section. Don't forget to press the channel subscription button. If this is the first time you watch a video on the channel.